Hey guys, Adam with Clifton Door. So this will be part two. If you haven't checked out the uh, part one, go ahead and check that out first. We'll have a link right here to the video. Uh, the reason being is uh, we want you guys to see the process of us kind of taking apart already established kits and then putting something together with some new items that we have uh, incorporate for this kit for a overnight uh, area and some sub-zero uh, temperatures. So um, we got our ILBE here. We got all of our gear and I'll kind of go over a semi review of what we have in here and then we'll start packing up, getting organized. And I don't know how long this part's gonna be. We might do a part three um, before we go out there in the field to test it out. So uh, stay tuned guys, we'll be right back. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is uh, find that stealth pack. I can't find the stealth admin pack. Talk about iron, ah, here it is. Talk about some irony. All right, so we're gonna take out our uh, Glock 23 mags. We don't really need the legs of that. This thing's pretty cool, we'll do a separate video on this. It's got one sleeve here, two bungee, two uh, sleeves, pretty good amount of room, one sleeve in the back. That's uh, almost a full zipper down. The uh, probably one third zipper down. Sleeve back here, two other pockets, and two more bungees. So we're going to take this and uh, get our fire kit in here. I do have an extra flashlight. Some char cloth. A candle, a little pink lady candle, which I'll be doing something special with. Some uh, utility flame. I have uh, some live fire some storm matches. Now these are the guys that, uh, they're not the, the uh, hurricane matches, they're storm matches from Pro Force, but they, they work pretty well. They're, they're the same, same type of deal. Same type of deal. We got our magnesium, cotton, Vaseline, a little uh, ferocium rod, Big lighter with a rubber band so it can't leak. And uh, ooh, some cross numbers to a emberlet. And I got some uh, trioxane. So heavy bag. Actually, this bag feels just as heavy. Let me see. This might be heavier. Of course, we got patches all over it and silliness. Hmm. Tell you what, it might not be much. We got the clips on here as well, so I guess I have the clips on there. So let's go ahead and uh, load this guy up. There's nothing like there's nothing like having a dozen ways to start a fire. So this could stay on the exterior of the pack. I can always get to it, get my stuff, ready to rock and roll. Shoot, what if we even throw extra? I'm such a flashlight junkie. Ugh. Look at that. That works. So I can get rid of one of these knives. I think I'm gonna stick with my Falkneven Iden and my Echo 5. Pow. That's good. Toiletry kits. Let me change the angle for you guys. Be right back. All right, look at all this delicious craziness. Well, this is a uh, bag for my camera bag. We're gonna. Toss it over there. So, we've got our jet boil. That you know that's going to stay. Our notepad, fire kit. Got our uh, water. Now we'll take this guy and throw these magazines in here. So go back to my EDC kit. Throw some patches back on here. Chaboom. Got one knife, got two knives. <laughs> Man, emberlets, love them. All right, so this needs to go with a, uh, another kit someplace. A pen we don't need. This can go with another kit. Baco is a must. 
headlamp Bravo and headlamp Alpha. All right. How are we going to take that saw? Hmm. I think I'm going to yank this. Not playing with you today, buddy. Back a little bit. Our cordage options. It's a bank line. Robbie really has got me on the bank line, fellas. Some uh, jute twine. Um, why the jute twine? Well, I don't know. Might use that for some other fun things here in the near future. To this guy right here, my water bottle holder. Now this does get big enough to contain this guy. and I could pack, pack it on the, the back, be able to get to it. So I'll probably use this. But we're getting to that place where I don't want a bunch of crap mollied on the back of my gear. Um, so I just got to be careful with that. I don't know where this bungee cord, oh, it broke anyway. It's probably something nice. All right. We got our sleeping bag. We have our bedroll. We have our emergency rations of food. Plenty of calories in that guy. All right. So do we need our axe? I know I use a heck of a lot of Heck, a lot of action goes on in the old E2E camp, so we're going to maintain that guy. All right. Extra fuel canister, redundant backup burner. So right here, we have our, uh, and then of course, our other piece of shelter. You guys see that guy back there? Probably not. We have our, uh, our tent. Put that in the back. So shelter, good. Fire, check. Water, check. We have other purification options as well. We have food. We have our light source. We have our edged tools. We have our rope. Another edge tool. Poncho. Protective gear. Got work gloves and warm gloves. I don't know if you guys have seen this little monstrosity. Two pair of wool gloves. I actually have a thinner pair of gloves I can fit inside of these. Uh, but these do leave enough dexterity in my hands to do what I need to do. Um, th they are a little cool, but for the most part, I'm keeping my core so warm. Fingertips are feeling pretty good. A wool scarf because I'm an old man. I don't like the back of my neck to be cold. <laughs> Knee pads, probably a luxury item that I, I'll probably dump. I don't know yet. And extra piece of electronic equipment. I do have my electric EDC kit that I'll throw in here as well. And also my EDC survival kit that I'll probably be strapped to my belt um, just in case. So medical kit, we can go with or without. So here's our toiletry kit and other. First off, I don't know why I have a huge tube of toothpaste in here. I think that was the only one I could buy at the truck stop uh, because my kids are famous for stealing my toothpaste and toothbrush out of my kits. I don't even know what's in here. Oh, water purification tablets. They can stay in here. And uh, so these are like makeshift survival kits. I have some some bungee cords in here. Let me just pull out what I have in here. Just some little odds and ends. These little Cat9 things. They're pretty cool. Um, you know, sometimes you just want to clean your teeth. These things aren't bad. I have a larger snail, some rubber tubing, kind of stuffed in here. This is just a bungee uh, slingshot band, but this is a horrible one. Two different size, snares, an old signal mirror, probably goes in my pockets. Hand sanitizer, 
toothbrush, little medical baggie, this is a little insect, poison ivy, baggie, some Purell wipes, toilet paper, which is not really toilet paper, toothbrush, toothpaste, extra little space blanket and poncho. So this is kind of a catch-all. It's kind of a little a toiletry kit, some odds and ends, um, a place where I probably threw stuff like this because I had little pouches before to organize that a little bit better. Um, now this is a little bit more of the same, a little bit larger. Duct tape, we have off repellent, we have some snare wire. wire. Here's a snake bite kit. A little story behind this thing. These are worthless. Um, they're not going to do you any good. But my mom bought me this and she wanted me to take it out with me everywhere I went. So hopefully she didn't see this video and, t and tell me that it was tell and telling her that it's worthless. Go ask Joe about snake bites. He's been bitten by snakes before. Floss, chapstick, Purell. I got my Aquamara straw, extra baggies, some wipes, some gum. Some toilet paper, extra candles, soap, some antibiotics, some utility flame. So I'm probably going to take some of these items, put them in here, and dump this bag. This bag will work a little bit better. So uh, let's get this all packed up. We'll be right back. All right, so we're going to exchange the toothpaste. And actually what I've decided to do is I'm going to keep these two kits. This will be a smaller kit I'll keep gear in, some other odds and ends. And I'll keep this one as my main toiletry kit. So thought it over, and that's what we're gonna do with this. All right, guys. So it's important to start off to say that you know, this will be a solo trip. I will have Ace with me. Um, we are gonna be going out and doing maybe an overnight or maybe two. Uh, now I'm gonna be in an area that'll be. I'll have cell phone reception. I'll have uh, redundant uh, batteries to make sure my cell my cell phone is charged, so I can call out for help or anything like that. So there's not gonna be something where I'm ridiculously out there. Uh, I probably. Uh, Send up a flare for a rusty party if need be. And that's going to be important. Well, I'll say that now. We'll see what happens when I get out there in that situation. It's going to be important to let people know where you're going to go, especially if you're going to do something like this trip where it's going to be pretty cold. Um, and I still haven't figured out yet because I haven't packed this bag. We're doing this all in real time where my camera equipment's going to go. So we might bring an extra bag with me, which is going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, it might be time for me to invest in some Pelican type cases that I can actually throw on Ace's, an Ace's saddlebag for his backpack and make him my camera. Uh, Sherpa. So we'll see what happens with that. So we got our ILBE here. Everything is emptied from it with the exception of our little emergency medical kit that we have mollied on the side here, but which would probably not stay in a real world situation. This was a place on here for an outing that we had that we were basically doing some car camping, but I wanted to be able to pack everything up in my bag and be able to pack out some of my carrying stuff back and forth to the vehicle, um, which was a couple hundred yards away. And yeah, I was being lazy guys. Uh, some real quick some items that we've exchanged just to do a quick review we had my old ground pad that I've used for a couple different outings I do love this from Thermarest I think this is the pro performance or pro something I don't know can't remember go watch the video uh, this is my new ground pad that I'll be using this is the Xtherm Neo Air and you guys can see the the size difference and this is actually a better pad it's a better performing pad also in this new kit I'll be using this Thermares Arteras Atera, sleeping bag, which is almost the same size as this other Thermares pad. Very light stuff. We'll have specs and everything on separate video reviews of these items. Um, and this is how I usually work, guys. I, I try not to go and watch anybody else's videos. I don't want to have any other, you know, preconceived notions or um, any anything that would cause me to discriminate this piece of gear based on somebody else's utilization of that. And that's important because it's got to fit the way that I use the gear. And also there's a certain aspect of the user friendliness about a piece of gear. Um, I don't want to have to take an eight hour course on how to use a piece of equipment. And I'm being quite literal on that. There's some things you get out there and you basically need instructions. Before. Now I always take stuff out and put it together before I go out in the field. Um, but if it's you know really complicated or complex, it's going to dishearten people when they get it. It's not going to you know fit that that expectation, which is gonna you know, make them not wanna go out and use it. So we try to take things through a veil of ignorance as much as possible when we go out. So you guys get my fresh perspective on it. And I think it's more honest that way. I'm not gonna, you know, I don't wanna jump down in the pop propaganda of whatever piece of gear that I'm using 
because people think it's cool at that time to like it. I want to give you a legitimate and true feeling about it. So, separate views on these two items. Okay, so let's talk a bit, little bit about um, the zones of how you pack your pack. Uh, Ron Hood's got a great video in his video series um, about, um, you know, he's got a great rig set up for him to pack his bag. It's basically a wooden frame where his bag hangs onto so he can actually check the balance and the weight. Uh, but just the, 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 the quick and the ugly of it is everything that's heavy, you want to be high and close to your back. Um, you don't want it to be further away. If it's too far and high, it's gonna make you want to lean back like this. If it's too, too far and low, you're gonna be you know, trying to counter that weight because it's, you're, it's gonna pull you down from your core. Um, you're kind of like a, a balance point in your back. If there's a bunch of weight right here, if there's a bunch of weight up here and it's far away, it's a little bit different. So you want it high and close to your back for the heavier items. Zone lading is the name of that, uh, that theory. ILBE bag that I have here, what do we want to put at the bottom? Well, I got a bunch of fluffy, compressed, light items um, that I'm not going to need to use or pull out until I empty my whole bag. So, in essence, you know, why do I need to pull any of this stuff out until the very end? The same thing with clothing. I'm going to have all the clothing that I need. For some reason, I need to stop and change my underwear. Well, I'm going to have some other host of problems that I'll have to worry about. So, this kind of stuff, I think, can go in the bottom of the bag, can go, um, you know, uh, fill up that volume there. So, you have air ability to put some heavier stuff close to your back as you pack your bag up. So, just to kind of take a survey of the items that I have here, of course, I have my tent. This is a four season tent. This will fit in this pack. I've had this filled in here with some larger items, so it shouldn't be an issue. So this is 6.5 pounds, probably one of the, the heavier single items I have in here that's going to probably go the whole length of the bag. So my plan is to kind of put this in the middle where the poles and everything are right up against my spine. And let's get started. So just bear with me, guys. I don't know if I have some uh, Benny Hill music playing in the background while I'm uh, packing this pack or you guys will hear the breathing concentration going on. So let's, uh, let's get this guy started. All right, guys, so first step, see if I can pick up the bag. And so without the, the collar there, you guys can see the bag's pretty full already. Now that's got my shelter, it's got my clothes, it's got all the extra stuff that I would need for an event like this. In theory, everything else that I really would truly need can fit into smaller packs or can be mollied on here. Of course, I have tons of volume still left in the bag and we haven't even loaded anything into the hood area up here. So, but this is the reason you need a bag at this size is because of larger items like that that you'll be using in a colder environment. So we got that all snug in there. And uh, you know, this bag does have these giant pouches on the side I can use for something. It also has this little flap here that I've tossed things before that I want to get to throughout my excursion. So this is the thinking man time frame. Um, all right, so everything's in here. The one thing that, again, is uh, my gold zero, which if I'm not bringing all my camera equipment, doesn't need to come in this pack. I have a smaller pack that I can throw in here for my other smaller electronic devices that I can capture this event. So I think I'm gonna pull this out and leave this with my camera case. And if for some reason I'm carrying this bag and then the extra case to where I'm going, it's going to be a pain in the butt, but we'll make it work. So we're pretty good right now. Uh, I do have enough room in here that if I wanted to set, you know, my wool stuff and throw this hood over and secure it, I would be able to quite easily. These bags have all kinds of different options. Like I said before, this layer right here is probably going to be my main layer that I'm going to be wearing the whole time. A couple other items that I have in here. This is my fire kit, uh, which will probably go on the exterior of the bag. I'll find a good place for that. The same thing with my axe. There is enough room to put this axe inside the bag, but you know, I might do that right now. Let's see if we can find some nice area to slide this guy in. Again, heavy weight close to the back and to the top. So the ax head I want to be right there at the top of the bag. So that fit in there pretty well. Gloves and all this other stuff can go in the 
top compartment. The only other thing I might throw in here is my journal, because that might be something that I want to grab and pull out. But of course, that might fit well in the side compartment here. It's a waterproof case. Yeah, it looks pretty, looks pretty handsome. That's not hateful at all. So, now I will tell you guys, I guarantee you, this is not going to be the last time I pack this bag. And this is pretty. Look at all that extra room I have in there. I mean, to tell you the truth, let's just do this. Let's take these bad boys, put them at the top. Because more than likely, I won't need those pants off the go. And I'm going to have another coat, probably my 511 Gore-Tex and fleece. Love that freaking coat. I don't know if I've done a video on that coat or not. That's actually issued from work, so I don't know if I should do a video on that or not. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about, fellas. All right, pretty sassy. Now I have this little, little flappy right here. We might just throw our Gore-Tex, I mean our Gore-Tex, our rain fly in there. For the simple reason is we might need to pull that guy out. And this is big enough for me to throw over everything. Use it uh, as kind of a ground cloth and a tarp over my bag once I get it set up. I will say one thing about these bags. Oh, I forgot to put this on here. Is uh, so many doodads every which way. Like a glove. Let's uh, throw this guy on real quick for all intents and purposes. Hopefully it won't mess up my uh, microphone here. So of course, keeping in consideration guys, I got to uh, put this on with a coat on and all the other good stuff. I just have, you know, a thermal and a t-shirt. Feels pretty well. Am I standing up straight enough, guys? Do a little, do a little walk on the green screen. Feels pretty good. Weight feels pretty, pretty distributed. That'll work. So, I still have a couple more items that I need to put on here, but uh, for right now, everything's good. Ah. I did forget one item, the emergency food ration section. So we do need to get that in here. But that can also go up top here. Should not worry about that. Let's go ahead and throw all these other jobbies up here. Got our Baco. Now these will probably be on our belts, but for right now we're gonna throw those in there. our cordage, and a headlamp. Put one headlamp in there. And do one in someplace else. You guys can see I got some extra room in here for some stuff. So I do this on purpose. So if there's any other little items that I need, we'll throw our, uh, our work gloves in here. So you get right there on that side of the bag. And I'm not gonna throw my scarf in there because I use that every day. And we'll throw some of this line in here as well. And compression straps on the side, I could throw that tent on the exterior of the bag if I wanted to. Of course, I need something else to balance it out. 
I will be throwing the large tarp in my chair on the exterior. That's the plan for this, which they're both very light items. They're not going to add that many snags, snag points or anything like that. So the only other thing that I need to get in here, I have this extra headlamp, which will probably be in my pocket. The knee pads may not need those. I'm not going to be in normal pair of pants. I'm probably going to have my wool pants off. So you know what? We're going to throw these to the side. And so the only other thing that I need to find a stash point is I have this extra butane canister, which I can't throw in the side pocket here. That'll work. And we have this extra little pouch right here, which would be easy to throw. Throw it right there, why not? It's not very heavy, it's a little low, but to tell you the truth, it'll be easy to get to. There's nothing in here that's crushable or it's gonna break and cause me any issues. And uh, whoever I'm out in the field with, later down the line, it'll be easy for them to get to it as well. Probably gonna change this. I, could, I already don't like it. I haven't even snapped it on there. I don't like it anymore. But this video is getting a little long, so decisions have to be made. And then last but not least, I'm going to throw my water bottle on here someplace. Here's the, uh, the trouble with this. Where I'm going to place this is not going to be, I'm not going to be able to remove this thing and drink from it while I'm walking. I'm going to have to stop, take the bag off, take a break which is a necessity anyway. Actually, the bag is pretty balanced. It's sitting up there by itself. Okay. What we do with this is just expand the bungee cord in here. And this should slide in here. Now, it is kind of a pain to get your canteen cup out because of the handles. But it'll work. but it makes the, getting the cup out easier because the canteen cup keeps the shape. That goes over there and booyah. So I would have to put this a little bit closer so I still have room to get my chair in there, which shouldn't be a problem. The only other real important piece of item that I would need for here is uh, something for Ace. Ace is my German Shepherd for those of you guys just joining us. And we need to have some kind of ground pad or something for him. So that would that would need some extra thought, uh, even like some wool blanket or, um, you know, he's probably gonna snuggle up next to me in my uh, my sleeping bag. Knowing him, he's gonna try to crawl inside the sleeping bag with me. I let him do it once when he was a puppy, and now he's uh, full grown and weighs 90 pounds. He still thinks it's cute. He's, one, he's definitely one of those dogs that doesn't know this, how, how big he is. He's not aware. So we do have a little bit of a mixture of some more high-speed type, lightweight gear, ultralight gear, and then some older, heavier stuff. There is a lot of extra in here, guys, that I know I probably don't need, and I could probably get lower weight versions of. Um, so, I mean, this bag itself is a heavy bag. I mean, the backpackers are doing it for a tenth of the weight of this bag. Uh, those guys who are super, super serious about it. Um, but I got enough room to get uh, my 12 by 10 tarp in here and uh, of course my uh, my chair which is you know, that'll pack up about this size and I'll throw that through the compression straps right there and I'll be I'll be set to go so guys that's gonna be pretty much it for for right now um, let me know what you guys think and the last little bit of it is is figuring out what we're gonna do uh, for camera equipment um, this setup I do have enough enough equipment and space here for two people I mean, if, if, uh, if Robbie and I did some camping together and uh, shared, shared the two per, that two-person tent, because it is a two-person tent, it's not a one-person tent. I actually have a four-season two-person tent in there. Now, keep in mind, if we have uh, two people and two dogs in there, probably going to be a tight fit, but I can guarantee you we're going to stay nice and toasty warm. Um, so all, all somebody else, need, like my daughter, would be an extra sleeping pad and a sleeping bag. Um, and she could probably carry that stuff with her little kid as well. 
So guys, let me know what you think, and uh, I'm liking this thus far. Uh, this is gonna be ready to rock and roll. I'll probably keep this in my bat in my vehicle. Uh, we're still getting some crazy weather, so if anything ever happened, I got stuck someplace or stuck at work or stuck alongside the road someplace, just go out in the woods and do it on my iPhone, do a video. That'd be a pretty cool video. Hey guys, my vehicle's in a ditch someplace, and uh, AAA is a few hours away, so I thought I'd just stay here the night. So we'll see what happens, and I do have to figure out what I need to do for my camera equipment, getting it squared away on that. So there are some interesting things. There's a new bag that I'll be testing here soon from Mystery Ranch. Not as big as this, um, but if I took out like the clothing and stuff, which is a lot, I mean, there's, there is a good long weekend worth of clothing. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about I get there Friday night and leave Sunday morning. I mean, I'm talking about we leave Thursday night and get home Tuesday morning or whatever, or leave Monday night, you know, holiday weekend type action. So I can be stinky for a little bit. That's not a problem. I do have this bag set up on me so it fits me pretty well. It's you know adjustable. We've done some other videos on this. There's other some great videos and guys that have used these bags a lot longer than I have. So check that out as well. So that's me pretty much it, guys. Let me get your feedback and your thoughts. I hope you liked it. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, the 31st of January, Robbie's coming up. Uh, Dan Eastland's coming down. So we have some business to work on, some stuff. And uh, you know we're a bunch of crazy kids always in the lab, but. Likewise, we will be doing some kind of trip. Uh, there will be some Canids uh, coming with us, though. So there'll be some, there'll be some uh, new members of the family, as you guys have known, if you listen to the podcast. So check out the podcast Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, you can we have, we'll usually put that up on YouTube, or you can check out our blog, talk radio, or just go to the EquippedDoor.com website. It, come, it goes up right at one o'clock. All right, guys, Adam from Equipped and Door. If you have any questions or comments, please email me at Adam at Equipped and Door.com. Um, this, I might have to go take this out for a walk with Ace and start getting some training in there. So, important thing, I test out a bag if it's too heavy. If you can't do a lunge, you know, just drop down to a knee and then come back up with it, you probably need to get your bag, your backpack a little bit lighter or get in the gym and start hitting the squat rack. So, all right, guys, you guys take care. Be safe out there. Remember, you're not always prepared. You're never prepared. Thanks.